Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So biological age testing or epigenetic age testing, as it is sometimes called, is very much in vogue at the moment with lots of companies now offering this particular service. Indeed, some of you will know that I took an epigenetic age test on my 56th birthday uh, and I'll be doing another one on my 57th birthday. So I thought it'd be a good time to go over what is a biological or an epigenetic age test, what is epigenetics and what does it measure, and then once we've got that measurement, how we can use that to change our lifestyle, if you like, to make what, what years we do have left um, more productive and more enjoyable. So without further ado, let's jump into the presentation and look at biological or epigenetic age testing. Biological age testing is very much in the zeitgeist at the moment. However, having now done some research, it's obvious that not all biological tests are conducted in the same way. Now, all the sources that I use to put this presentation together uh, are in links in the description below. So let's move on to biological age testing. And biological age testing, we need to ask the question, what is epigenetics? Well, epigenetics is the science of how our DNA is controlled and how it's affected by external factors. These external factors affect our health span and our lifespan. Now, our genetics are fixed from birth. We get our genes from our parents and they define us as being male or female. They also control things such as eye color and height. This is what is measured by companies such as 23andMe. We all share more than 99% of our DNA. However, the remaining 1% varies from person to person. This is what makes us unique. Epigenetics looks into these dynamic changes. These changes that happen in our gene function over time. Changes that don't involve a change in the underlying DNA sequence. These are changes that are influenced by external factors. Let's now discuss our epigenetic factors and how much these can actually affect our health span and our lifespan. So someone who is at high risk of heart disease from a genetic predisposition, so for example, there's a family history of heart disease, may have four times the chance of developing heart disease because it is in their genes. Now, obviously this is bad, but compare that to someone who has a low risk of heart disease from a genetic predisposition but is affected by external environmental and lifestyle factors. The risk to them is 5,000 fold or 5,000 times more chance of getting heart disease because of the environment or life choices that they have made. So there's a lot more risk from factors that are under our control than actually from our genes. As David Sinclair says, only 20% of longevity is genetic. The rest is up to you. What will you do today? The good thing is, there's something we may be able to do to change this. As you may know, identical twins have the same DNA, but through lifestyle choices, may well have vastly different health outcomes by the time they reach middle age. Which of these twins do you think smoked and did not use sunscreen? Biological age testing allows us to read our epigenetic markers markers that we can influence through changes in our lifestyle. Epigenetic markers change every time one of our cells divides. And even when our cells are not dividing, changes are still taking place to our epigenetic markers. We can affect through lifestyle the way that these markers change and through DNA methylation testing, we can monitor our progress, either good or bad. It's not always easy to do the right thing, and there is no magic pill. Targeted supplementation is only one small part of the answer. So let's look at our biological age, and let's discuss why we should check our biological or our epigenetic age. Our epigenetic age is a much better measure of our health, our well-being, our health span, and our lifespan than our chronological age. Knowing our epigenetic or biological age allows us, you and me, to move our healthcare needs from being reactive to being proactive. 
We can become citizen scientists. We can take responsibility for our own longevity by measuring our health objectively at the molecular level. And once we know our epigenetic age, we can take the necessary measures to adjust it if necessary. And I'm guessing no matter what your biological age, you would like to see it lower. Let's look at what I like to call the slippery slope. Now, epigenetics measures how well your body is aging. If your epigenetic or your biological age is higher than your actual or calendar age, you are more at risk from age-related diseases and all-cause mortality. David Sinclair often talks about gateway issues, such as being pre-diabetic or having elevated blood pressure. These conditions very rarely stand alone forever. They usually open the door to type 2 diabetes and hypertension, which in turn lowers our body's defenses and opens us up to even more serious age-related diseases. A 40-year-old whose epigenetic age is 55 is considerably more at risk from age-related diseases than, say, a 40-year-old whose epigenetic or biological age is only 42. This stands to reason. Let's now discuss DNA methylation and telomere lengths. There are now many companies that measure telomere lengths to predict epigenetic age. This is Tom Stubbs, the CEO of Chromonomics, a company that conducts DNA methylation tests. So today we have Tom Stubbs from Chronomics. Thank you so much for being here. Um, would you be able to give us an overarching view of what Chronomics do? Sure. Uh, so at Chronomics, we are creating objective measures of health to deliver a future of prevention. Mm. So whereas today, most people are focused on building biomarkers of disease mm -hmm. to measure ill health, we're focused on building biomarkers of health so people can avoid disease. Mm, interesting. I mean, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about your background and then kind of how you arrived here? Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah. sure. So my background, I did my undergrad at Oxford University in molecular and cellular biochemistry. Mm. Uh, left there and went to Cambridge to do uh, a master's in uh, semiconductor physics applications of biology and then a PhD in short postdoc at the Baber Institute mm. where I was supervised by one of the founders in the field of epigenetics, Professor Wolf Reich uh, and the technical co-founder of Selexa that then became Illumina, Professor Shankar Balas mm. and I was building uh, epigenetic predictors of aging and developing different tools for the study of epigenetics. There are some issues with the accuracy of telomere length testing but I will let Dr Stubbs explain the details. So actually, epigenetics uh, is probably the best biomarker in the world for predicting biological age. So, I mean, I'm not sure if your uh, viewers have heard of telomere length or telomere tests, kind of ends of your DNA. Uh, and as you age or as you experience stress, they, they are kind of, they accelerate their rate of attrition. Uh, but, the, but this is a not such a good measure for actually predicting uh, biological age. And actually epigenetics, uh, you can get sort of to a median error with epigenetics relative to chronological age of just over three years. So it's, it's highly accurate. And actually this error information has information relating to how healthy you are. So if you look young relative to your age, then you are healthier than somebody that looks old relative to their age. On a, on a population level, I should say. So I guess, I guess the difference comes down to, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things here. So one is that um, these two measures of age, although they're not, so you've got kind of your telomere measure and then sort of your epigenetic measure of age. And these two measures uh, are starting more and more to seem like they're related in some way. So uh, there have been kind of population studies done in human humans that have found that there's certain specific genes that there are mutations in uh, or in the control regions of these genes that are associated with um, increased or decreased epigenetic age. And these seem to be genes that are also important uh, for maintaining telomeres. So there seems to be some, some crosstalk between them. But I think, I think the, the real difference is that in the case of looking at telomere lengths, uh, depending on how you're measuring your telomeres, you basically get back one number. So 
because the, the DNA that makes up telomeres is very repetitive, it's very hard, or depending on the method you're using, uh, to separate out which telomere is which. And so you just end up with one number, and that number has to in some way relate to age. In the case of methylation, you have essentially 20, 28 million roughly positions that you can then begin to build models on to predict age. So you've got a lot more information that, as you say, you can start using machine learning or AI to start pinning down um, age two, uh, let's say. I think the other difference is, so with telomere length, uh, it's hugely dependent on the, the tissue that you look in, so, or the cell type that you look in. So telomere length measurements tend to be done from leukocyte samples, so from uh, white blood samples. Uh, whereas in the case of the epigenetic uh, predictor of biological age or chronological age, you can actually tell the age prediction from uh, from any tissue. So you can also get it even from urine. Uh, so you can you can get a, a prediction of age that is accurate in in many different tissues. I guess there's a there's a couple of different ones, but the one I'm talking about that's multi tissue is uh, known as the DNA methylation age predictor. Uh, so it is a DNA <laughs> mark predictor. Uh, and it was defined by a guy called Steve Horvath, who actually is a professor over at UCLA, so in California. So there are upwards of 20 million markers available to build models that can more accurately predict age. So there's a lot more information available than just the one marker used when using telomeres. This means that DLA methylation testing is much more accurate for estimating someone's biological age. So in this case, bigger is better. Let's look at the company Chronomics in a little bit more detail. We have already heard from the CEO, Dr. Tom Stubbs, but in outline, Chronomics are a B2B company who sell their technology to anti-aging companies. DoNotAge.org is one of those companies. They also have a YouTube channel where you can gather more information on epigenetic age testing. Now you can see from this image that the number of biological markers used by Chronomics will give a significantly more accurate epigenetic age than that of the competition. This information was gathered by DoNotAge.org as they search for the best B2B provider of an epigenetic age prediction service. The closest competitors are Mahudo with 850,000 markers and Elysium with 100,000 markers. Now the company at the bottom of the list you will see is epiage.com. And some of you may remember that's the company I used on my 56th birthday. Uh, that's before I knew what I know now, but mainly out of necessity because they were at the time the only company I could find that did international testing. Out of the 20 million markers available for predicting age, they use 13. Uh, not 13,000, just 13. So I'm not sure how many months margin of error that allows for. Chronomics with 20 million markers claim an accuracy of between six and 12 months. So they can give you an accurate uh, estimation of age to within one year. Now, obviously this level of science and accuracy comes at a cost. Prices hopefully should come down with time but at present, the most accurate test is still very much the most expensive. So if you're going to consider buying the Chronomics um, Biological Age Testing Kit, uh, DunaAge.org do sell them. Uh, they sell the kit for £495, which is expensive, uh, which is $644. Uh, if you use the discount code MYNMN, then you're going to get 10% off that. So you will end up paying £445.50, which is around uh, $577. So an overall saving of about $68. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, you can see there there's quite a lot to epigenetics, but the good thing is, as uh, David Sinclair says, once you have the information, there is a lot that you can do to put things right uh, if you think that your score is um, not what you want it to be. Uh, if you're looking to do an epigenetic test and you're not going to choose one of these companies, then as part of your um, fact finding or your due diligence, if you like, uh, I would definitely contact the company and ask them how many epigenetic markers they use 
to establish what your bio biological age is. As you've seen from this slide during the presentation, not all um, biological tests are equal and you really do get what you pay for. The more money you pay, the more epigenetic marks they can measure, the more accurate your biological age is going to be. So if you've got one of the cheaper ones and you're thinking about testing your age every three or six months, you may not be gathering the most accurate information. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care. Uh, I'll see you soon. Uh, bye for now.